Is a safe kite made of metal ever? Never! What about frogs? I like frogs. What about frogs? I like frogs. Now stand up. Growing up as a huge Batman fan over the years, I've always loved the villains, each with their own flaws and imperfections that make them that more interesting. Whether it be from Riddler with his absolute obsession to know the answer to every riddle and wanting to be noticed by others no matter the cost, or Penguin with his fascination with buying everything that is remotely valuable to show that he's the richest man in the room due to a slight insecurity he has, always striving to be accepted by others. There's also Two-Face and his duality between justice and revenge, choice and destiny, and then there's the Joker. And attempted world domination. Or maybe, I don't know, the eraser. But for me, I think it's someone else that is far more interesting. A villain with such a tragic and agonizing tale, but a conclusion that leaves you with hope in your heart. A tale that has one of the best redemption stories. I could ever read in my life, and it comes from the most unlikeliest of villains you could imagine, Kite Man. Growing up as a kid, my only exposure to the Kite Man character was through Brave and the Bold, where he was responsible for the origin of Plastic Man, and also had a feud with Ben Franklin due to his involvement with kites. The most famous kite-related person in history! But as time went on, a story came out called The War of Jokes and Riddles, and oh man, does it elevate this character so much in so many ways. In this story, essentially, a civil war has been made in Gotham between the Riddler and the Joker, with both their own armies of villains from all over the Batman mythos. And one of those characters that plays a key role in this story would be, you guessed it, Kite Man. But before I get into that, I'm going to briefly go over Kite Man's entire history because I took the time to do it, and it can't be for nothing. In Kite Man's first appearance, I'd go as far as to say that the writers at this time just made Kite Man for the joke of it, and in his first story, Kite Man would be demonstrating his kite-centric gadgets to steal a ruby in a penthouse. Yeah, kite-centric. And once flying into the penthouse, he would use his propelled kite to fly so fast towards the ruby that not even the daring boy wonder could get a grasp on him. After this, Kite Man tries to enact a prison break for a few of his old crew members. However, Batman and Robin get the drop on Kite Man. Then Batman uses a dragon kite at some point and drop kicks Kite Man, defeating him, and that's the end. Then like 10 or 20 years later, he tries to pull off a new heist with a different crew and manages to secure all the money with the help from said crew, and at the final moments before they succeed, Kite Man just fucking dips on them, only to end up being beaten by Batman like moments later and get embarrassed by the whole GCPD. And to top everything off, Batman even asks Jim Gordon the question, why do some children never grow up? Goddamn Kite Man, you just gonna take that? <clears throat> um, it's been about nine months since I last worked on this video and holy shit, my content was so different back then. And uh, Nexus Edits, I see you, and don't think I forgot about you, that James Gordon Jr. vid's coming your way, so just hold on tight. And, alright, anyway, let's continue. Now, once Kite Man gets out of prison, he doesn't pack up the Kite Man name. Oh, no. He goes up against a hero whose main ability is flight and tries to steal a golden eagle that is supposedly very valuable. On top of this, Zatanna is also there and manages to freeze Kite Man hundreds of feet up in the air and just lets him plummet to the ground, nearly dying. Jesus. I mean, you honestly gotta give the guy credit. At least he never gives up, even when he fails every time. But that is until, finally, sometime later during the events of Final Crisis, it would turn out that Kite Man was killed off screen by Bane, supposedly. Or thrown off a building by Deathstroke, or he was stabbed to death. It's never really clear how he died. But in any case, how Kite Man started out as a jokey, ooh, I fly kites and rob you type of villain, he died nothing more than a sad and miserable man who refused to give up, even at the cost of others, for his selfish gain but his one redeemable trait, I guess, is that he never gave up. So, I guess all I have to say is, requiescat in pace, Kite Man. You were a real one. But, after DC's reboot called Rebirth, Kite Man was given just that, a rebirth. Gone was the writing Kite Man for small jokes, and now there was a new dawn for Kite Man, aka Charlie Brown. 
where he would be given not only the most tragic story any villain could receive, one full of loss, heartbreak, and insanity, but Kite Man would also be given quite the redemption story in the War of Jokes and Riddles. We start the story with Charlie Brown before he ever became Kite Man, in a bar drinking alone while explaining how he used to study wind and all that it is is balance. If something goes one way, it's expected to go the other way too. It's kind of a perfect example of what's to come for Charlie, because Batman would soon interrogate Charlie in hopes to find the Joker some way, somehow. This leads Charlie to find Deadshot and ask if there could be any way to get in touch with the Joker himself. It's also here where we find out that Charlie had created the Joker mobile and has worked with him before on several occasions and maybe thinks he could help the Joker again with the whole war going on. So after securing Joker's number, Charlie then calls the Joker and once they start talking, Joker gets hooked up on the fact that Charlie's name is just like the Charlie Brown character. Character, telling Charlie that he doesn't think the character is funny anymore, pretty much confusing Charlie. But despite this, he ends up setting up a meetup with Joker. The next day, Charlie spends the day with his son, who's also named Charlie, flying kites in the sky. Charlie asks his son if he enjoys flying the kite, to which his son says hell yeah. But Charlie hearing his son say this, he goes on to say that he shouldn't say that because his parents used to say that he'd go to hell for it, and this scares his son a bit. After, he ends up telling his son that he can't make his birthday coming up due to a meeting he has, but that he can do something fun afterwards to make up for it. The following night, while leaving a random diner, Clayface ends up capturing Charlie and brings him straight to the Riddler, where he basically threatens to kill his family if Charlie doesn't tell him where he's meeting the Joker. And long story short, the meetup doesn't go as planned and it becomes complete chaos. However, out of this chaos, Joker drags Charlie out to safety. Afterwards, the two end up awkwardly sitting in a random living room where Charlie just breaks the silence, explaining to Joker that everything that transpired and why the meeting went wrong was because of him. Joker then sends Charlie to kill Batman with a suicide vest in hopes to keep his son safe. However, in trying to detonate the vest, all it does is repeat the same joke over and over. What goes ha ha thump? A man laughing his head off. After this, it becomes a little bit haunting because while Charlie watches the news, it exclaims that villains are running rampant all over Gotham and that normal people pretty much can't do anything to stop them. Like, what are you gonna do against Firefly? a villain that's a literal pyromaniac with the ability to fly on top of having a huge flamethrower. The answer is nothing. You're just caught in the middle. And this is kind of what happens to Charlie. He gets caught up in the middle of everything and that's what makes his story so tragic. Because not soon after watching the news, Charlie gets a phone call from the Riddler telling Charlie a riddle having to do with kites and it ends up changing his life forever. See, because what the Riddler had done was he had poisoned the rope to the kite his son had used earlier because he knew that Charlie would end up betraying him, telling Batman everything. And the kicker to all of this is he just poisoned the boy to get to Batman. Charlie and his son were just in the crossfire. Later at the hospital, Charlie sits with his son, praying to God to save him. Meanwhile, his son says that he did something really bad that he said the bad word again he wasn't supposed to say ever, asking his father if it means he's going to hell now. But before Charlie can answer his dying son's question, he passes. And this is probably one of the most gut-wrenching moments in comics I have ever read in my life. After his son dies, Batman swears to Charlie that he'll take the Riddler down and give him the vengeance he deserves, but it means little to nothing to Charlie. Charlie ends up going to work on creating gear that can help him stop the man that killed his son, where we then cut to the Joker opening his door to the birth of Kite Man. Hell yeah. When we next see Kite Man, Kite Man starts to see the absolute horrors of Gotham with each new villain he gets paired with and slowly starts to go crazy. But despite all the insanity that Kite Man faces, what I think keeps him floating is the idea that being Kite Man makes his son proud. And one by one after each nightmare, Kite Man ends up thinking that he's always just meant to fail and to keep repeating the same mistake over and over because he now thinks of himself as a joke. He's become a product of the environment he's surrounded himself with, and in fighting Batman, he views it as though he's laughing with Gotham, Batman, and the huge list of villains, like he's now in on the joke. But being taken into custody and thinking about everything that's happened, on top of him not grieving over his son properly at all, he ends up just breaking down into tears, wishing he could have done better. But in comes the man responsible for his son's death, boasting about it, and calling Kite Man a joke that the Riddler made Kite Man. Knowing he joined the Joker after killing his son, and that leaving him the last member of the crew to capture, that he'd spill the beans on everything the Joker had planned, because he's a joke, and that's all he's ever been, because he's Kite Man. 
However, Riddler wants to send his entire army to take out the Joker, so he ends up devising a plan utilizing Kite Man's unique kites to be fitted to each of his members, so they can all fly up to Joker's tower and systematically end the war. I think one of the best things to come from this is Kite Man asking how much Killer Croc weighs to use the kite, and Killer Croc just says to Kite Man that he weighs a lot more than a kite can carry. Anyway, long story short, they all end up using Kite Man's gear to fly up the Joker's tower. They break in and proceed to beat the ever-living shit out of the Joker, ending the war. However, with the Joker now out of the way, they all turn to Batman as he's next on the list of obstacles to rule Gotham, but instead of it all turning into chaos, the one who ends up saving the day is Kite Man. He single-handedly takes out the entire Riddler army by planting a device inside each of their kites that, when activated, would send each of them flying to the Bat Blimp to later be put in jail or Arkham Asylum. Yeah. That's right. Batman didn't end the Joker War. It was fucking Kite Man. Hell yeah. And when Riddler loses to who we thought was the biggest idiot in the world, he knocks out Kite Man. But it's still a big win for Kite Man, and after all the heartache, trauma, PTSD, and tragedy, Charlie Brown found a way to persevere through the wars and insanities of Gotham and come out of it all a redeemed hero. And it doesn't stop there. During the City of Bane storyline, Kite Man returns trying to escape Batman's father, Thomas Wayne, who's trying to kill villains all over Gotham and rule over the city. And despite knowing that this version of Batman is willing to kill, Kite Man still risks his life to preserve the lives of these villains, deeming them worthy of saving because if he can go through the tunnel of insanity and come out of it a better man, he believes anyone can do the same. And that, to me, is the true measure of a hero. Leading him to end up helping Bruce Wayne take back his city and defeat his father by the end of the story. Kite Man by this point has been 100% redeemed, and even agrees to help Batman if he ever needs the helping hand. And it's astounding when you think about how Kite Man went from a degenerate, kite-obsessed man-child thug who used others for personal gain, only to be thwarted at every turn and ultimately end up a joke character, to being written as a desperate man trying to make up for all the mistakes he made in the past while also honoring the memory of his son and trying to change for the better. That is Kite Man. Hell yeah. I'm sorry that it took so long for this video to come out, since it's been practically over 10 months since I last announced this video, and you can probably tell that it's drastically different from my usual content, but I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless, and don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and as always, I'll catch y'all on the flip side. I woke up this morning. I woke up this morning. I woke up this morning.